Did you know that in just the past 12 months, global cocoa prices have more than doubled? A market shock that's left chocolate lovers feeling the pinch? Yet in the United States, the appeal of chocolate seems undiminished. Over 12 million pounds are still consumed each day as a familiar part of daily life. So, what gives those little chocolate bars the power to captivate an entire nation? The journey of chocolate begins with cocoa beans fermented under the scorching sun of West Africa, then passes through roasting, grinding, and conching in monfactories before transforming into the familiar chocolate packages on supermarket shelves. And today, let's take a closer look at the massive industry behind this bittersweet brown gold. Though just a small sweet treat, chocolate carries a history stretching from ancient civilizations to the massive industrial chains of the 21st century. Few people know that during World War II, chocolate was classified as a premium ration, becoming a rare source of morale for American soldiers amid brutal battlefields. Yet, the journey of modern chocolate truly began in 1847, when the first chocolate bar was created a moment that ushered in the era of mass production and transformed the global food industry. Today, about 70% of the world's cocoa supply comes from West Africa, where every cocoa bean is hand-harvested, fermented, and sun-dried before entering a supply chain worth over $130 billion. Beyond the mainstream market, the premium chocolate segment is booming. Bars made from rare Criollo cacao varieties can fetch prices up to $300, a figure few would imagine paying for a single sweet. But what keeps chocolate lovers coming back isn't just its economic value or luxury status. Did you know that a 30-gram serving of dark chocolate can contain between 150 and over 200 milligrams of flavonoids, powerful antioxidants typically found in green tea or red wine? Thanks to these flavonoids, dark chocolate has been scientifically proven to benefit heart health, improve blood circulation, reduce inflammation, and even help lower blood pressure slightly in some individuals. It's this unique blend of history, culture, and science that has turned chocolate into one of the world's most irresistible treats. The journey of chocolate begins on cocoa farms near the equator, where the hot and humid climate provides ideal conditions for cacao trees to thrive. It takes nearly four years for a cacao tree to mature and start bearing fruit. But once in season, each tree can produce 50 to 80 pods per year. Each pod contains dozens of cocoa beans, the very seeds that will ultimately determine the flavor of every chocolate bar. In West Africa, which supplies up to 70% of the world's cocoa, farmers tend each tree using traditional methods, preserving quality right from the root of the production chain. To produce high-quality cocoa pods, farmers must care for the trees almost year-round. Cacao is a fussy plant, requiring constant shade, which is why farms often intercrop cacao beneath banana trees or forest canopies to maintain stable humidity. Each week, the trees are inspected for pests and diseases, especially black pod disease and mealybugs, the two most common threats in West African growing regions. Old branches are pruned to allow just the right amount of light in, while the base of the tree is covered with dry leaves to retain moisture after each tropical rain. It's this meticulous care that defines the quality of every cocoa bean. When the cacao pods turn yellow-orange or deep red, the harvest season begins. This stage is almost entirely manual as cacao pods bruise easily and the slender trunks of cacao trees cannot withstand shaking. Farmers use small machetes or long-handled sickles to cut each pod individually, often working from the base up to branches to four meters above the ground. Each harvester can pick between 500 and over 1,000 pods per day, depending on the season and tree density. The freshly cut pods are gathered at the base of the trees, then split open on the spot with a machete to extract the white beans inside. The husks and pulp are left in the field as green compost, while the cocoa beans are collected into wooden boxes or large baskets to begin the fermentation process. 
At many West African farms, harvesting is repeated every two to three weeks throughout the season, creating a rhythmic labor cycle typical of tropical cacao growing regions. Immediately after being removed from the pods, cocoa beans are placed into wooden boxes to begin a five to seven day fermentation stage, a crucial step that determines the final flavor of chocolate. During this process, the temperature inside the bean mass naturally rises to 45 to 50 degrees Celsius, 113 to 122 degrees Faros, triggering biochemical reactions that reduce sharp acidity and develop the signature cocoa aroma. Every one to two days, the beans are turned to ensure even fermentation, as even a small mistake at this stage can ruin the entire flavor profile of the chocolate. At many West African farms, farmers still cover the beans with banana leaves, a traditional technique that has been used for hundreds of years. After fermentation, the cocoa beans are spread out evenly on large drying racks to begin a sun-drying phase that lasts between 5 to 10 days. Under the tropical sun, the beans must be turned regularly to reduce their moisture content to around 7%, just enough to ensure they can be stored and transported without molding. This is the final step before the beans are bagged and shipped to processing factories. When the sacks of cocoa arrive at the factory, the chocolate-making journey doesn't begin with machines. It begins with human hands. Workers carefully open each jute bag, tilt the cocoa beans into metal trays, and manually inspect them. A familiar ritual that no sensor can replace. They run their hands through the heaps of beans, feeling for dryness, examining the color, and picking out any beans showing signs of mold, insect damage, or uneven fermentation. High-quality beans must have firm shells, a slightly rough surface, and emit a distinctive fermented cocoa aroma. Only after passing this manual selection can the beans proceed to the roasting line. After cleaning, the cocoa beans are sent straight into the roaster, where the flavor of chocolate begins to awaken. In modern factories, the beans are roasted at around 120 to 150 degrees Celsius, 248 to 300 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 to 40 minutes, depending on the cacao variety and desired flavor profile. The heat evaporates the remaining moisture while triggering hundreds of Maillard reactions that produce the rich, warm cocoa aroma. To ensure even roasting, the roasting drums rotate continuously, keeping the beans in constant motion. Once roasting is complete, the outer shells become brittle and easy to remove, while the inner part, known as nibs, becomes aromatic and takes on a deep brown color. This step determines the depth, bitterness, and distinctive aroma of the finished chocolate. After roasting and cooling, the cocoa beans enter the shell removal stage, a crucial transition to extract the cocoa nibs. The beans are gently cracked to loosen the now brittle shells, then pass through a winnowing system. Powerful air streams blow the lighter shells to one side while the heavier nibs fall onto a conveyor belt for collection. This process removes up to 98% of the shells and impurities, ensuring that the nibs are clean and ready for grinding. In large factories, the nibs are also sorted by size using multi-tiered sieves to ensure flavor consistency in the next stages of processing. From the cleaned nibs, the transformation of cacao into liquid form begins inside massive grinding machines. Under continuous pressure and friction, each nib breaks down and releases its natural cocoa butter, gradually turning into a thick, flowing liquid known as cocoa liquor. In large-scale production lines, ball mills can hold tons of tiny steel balls just a few millimeters in diameter, rotating for hours to grind the particles down to an ultra-fine size just 15 to 25 microns, nearly 10 times smaller than the width of a human hair. This is a critical standard that gives chocolate its smooth and velvety texture. Afterward, the cocoa liquor is pumped into the conching chamber, where its flavor is further refined. Have you ever wondered what makes a premium chocolate bar melt smoothly the moment it touches your tongue? While cheaper chocolate often feels grainy and loses its flavor quickly, the answer lies in a quiet but decisive step, conching.
During this stage, chocolate is continuously stirred, mixed, and aerated at temperatures between 55 to 80 Kels, 131 to 170 Skirks. Heavy paddles refine any remaining cocoa particles while simultaneously driving off moisture and bitter acidic compounds, leaving behind a smoother, more aromatic, and well-rounded chocolate mixture with every passing hour. Interestingly, the magic of this stage lies in the timing. Premium chocolate is often conched for 48 to 72 hours, with some producers extending the process beyond 90 hours to achieve a particle size of just 10 to 15 microns, so fine that the human tongue can no longer detect any graininess. In contrast, mass-market chocolate is usually conched for only a few hours or even less, resulting in less depth of flavor and a less silky texture. After being conched for dozens of hours to achieve perfect smoothness and full-bodied flavor, chocolate enters the decisive moment of its fate. Tempering. Here's an unexpected truth. Chocolate can become beautiful or flawed within just a few degrees Celsius. In the tempering stage, every quality, from gloss and firmness to that satisfying snap, is determined by how well the factory controls the crystallization of cocoa butter. In automatic tempering systems, chocolate is sent into tempering machines, where every parameter is monitored through a program display. There, the chocolate is fully melted at around 43, 45, 109 to 130 fairies and continuously stirred to maintain a uniform structure. But what happens with a deviation of just one to two degrees Celsius? Chocolate will instantly develop fat bloom, patchy white streaks that dull the surface. Although this doesn't affect production costs, it significantly reduces the commercial value of the entire batch. Once perfectly tempered, chocolate enters its final stage, molding. In modern chocolate factories, the smooth liquid chocolate is poured into polycarbonate or metal molds placed on automated conveyor belts. Each mold typically holds 20 to 50 cavities depending on the product type. Next, the molds are sent into a cooling chamber set at 8 to 12 degrees Celsius, 46 to 54 degrees, for about 10 to 20 minutes. At this temperature, the cocoa butter crystals stabilize and gently release from the mold, allowing the chocolate bars to pop out easily with a mirror-like shine. Have you ever wondered why most commercial chocolate is shaped into rectangular bars with small square sections? What seems like a simple design has actually been optimized over decades. The small squares make it easy to snap off pieces cleanly while also helping the chocolate cool evenly in the mold. A key factor in preserving its glossy finish and preventing deformation. Once the chocolate bars have fully cooled and been released from their molds, they enter the final stage, packaging. On automated conveyor belts, each bar passes through weight checking systems and surface sensors to detect cracks or deformations. In large factories, packaging speeds can reach 300 to 600 bars per minute. Next, the chocolate is wrapped in a thin aluminum foil to protect it from light and moisture, two factors that can diminish its flavor. Outside the foil is a paper sleeve or offset printed wrapper, folded and sealed by robotic arms operating with millisecond precision. Many production lines use flow wrap machines, which create a fully sealed package that extends shelf life. Finally, the finished chocolate bars are packed into cardboard boxes, ready for their journey to supermarkets where they become the familiar brown gold we've all held in our hands. Today, the world consumes over 8 million tons of chocolate each year, with Americans alone eating up to 4.6 billion pounds, a figure that surges during Easter, when hundreds of millions of chocolate bars and eggs are sold in just a few short weeks from cocoa pods hand-harvested under the scorching sun of West Africa, to roasting, grinding, conching, and tempering lines operating with millimeter precision, the journey of chocolate is a perfect fusion of traditional labor and modern technology. Through each stage from farm to factory, chocolate is more than just a sweet treat. It is a story of climate, agriculture, engineering, and consumer culture. But as cocoa prices reach their highest levels in decades, one question remains, where is the future of chocolate headed?